Ah, hello everybody. And is everybody keeping well? I am so delighted to hear that. And me? Oh yes, not doing too bad at all. Thank you for asking. And are you keeping warm is the big question nowadays, of course, as we move well into autumn. Winter is not far away now. And I felt it this morning when I went out to feed the birds very early. It was four degrees outside. That's 39 Fahrenheit. And I checked the weather. Today here in South Yorkshire we are expecting a sizzling 15 degrees this afternoon. 15. That's 59 Fahrenheit. I don't know. I, maybe I could go out there and do some sunbathing. What do you think? <laughs> well, we're off to do something different today. We need to go somewhere warm. And the Caribbean is always a fun place to go to. So, I had a message from Carlos J on YouTube and he said, Father Dane, now that you are parked at Miami International Airport, can you fly from KMIA to MUHA? Mm. He's referring, of course, to a flight I made between Tampa and Miami back on, let's see, that would have been the 11th of September. And that, at that time, of course, the destination was Miami. So he wrote me very shortly afterwards, and that's the reason why he says, now that I'm parked at Miami International Airport. And where is Muha? M-U-H-A. Well, that's La Habana in Cuba. Of course, of course. So, we will make that flight. Now, I did do some checks, and I found that American Airlines does that route, and it is flight... 17, flight 17, and if you want to look it up on Flight Aware, it is AA17. And I've got some great scenery, of course, for today. KMIA Miami International Airport scenery is made by Latin VFR. Beautiful scenery, very detailed, of course. And La Habana. That, uh, that is M-U-H-A. That scenery is made by Mex High Flight. Mex High Flight. And it is a very good, very detailed scenery indeed. You know, the city is really a beautiful city. It still has all of the charm and the beauty of the original colonial architecture as the Spanish built it back in the 1700s. Today, it still looks very similar to the Habana of, of course, the time of Castro, which was at the time of um, John Kennedy, JFK, if you remember him. Are you old enough to remember him? It's back in the early 60s. Anyway, here's a few views of Habana that will show you what we're up for. Here you can see some very colorful streets indeed. And look at those cars. Beautiful vintage cars still running. And they make all the parts. They hand make all the parts when it comes to repairing them. Here is a view of Havana looking out towards the Caribbean and the coastal area. Look at all those streets and you can see there are some interesting new buildings there. 
And here's another one of Habana looking out. This one is the Barrio Chino de Centro Habana, the China, <laughs> the Chinese quarter, if you like, or neighborhood. Look at that building. And here is a lovely picture of Habana at night with all the lights reflecting on the sea. Calm waters there. And this is a picture of Plaza Vieja, the old square. And this is San Francisco Square in Havana. This is the great theater of Havana. And they put on some excellent ballets. And here is my favorite, of course, La Catedral de la Virgen Maria de la Concepción Inmaculada de la Habana. <laughs> Quite a mouthful, isn't it? It's the Cathedral of the Virgin Mary of the Immaculate Conception. And this was built back in 1777. Look at that building, and it's still magnificent today. Many people from Britain go to Cuba for holidays these days. And here you can see how the government Havana has responded to all the tourist industry. Yes, double-decker buses. They now roam the streets of Habana and with full of tourists. Right then, Carlos. If you're ready, then let's go into pre-flight and make ourselves a flight plan. We need to check the wind direction, check the weather, see what it's like, have a look at the airport plates and check out all of the things that we're going to need to make our flight today, because we're going to be following American Airlines Flight 17, Flight 1717. So if you're ready, let's go into pre-flight. Well, here we are in Flight Aware, and we're looking at American Airlines Flight 1717. Here are the designators. You can look it up as AAL17 or AA17 right there. The There is a flight, American Airlines Flight 17, it has just left Miami and is getting ready to take off. So we'll be shortly behind them. So I looked at this one because this was the previous flight. And this particular one left gate D26, gate D26. And we'll look to find out where that is in a little bit. And it arrived at gate B7, B7. And that's at terminal three, by the way, which we'll see later on. Looking at the route, here you can see it took off, swung around, went across the Everglades and then came down over Key West area, swung around, and then came in on this particular arrival pattern. The maximum cruise, looks like, was 26,000 feet. All right, looking now at Windy, here is the weather, current weather at Miami. Here you can see it's coming in off the South Atlantic, the Caribbean area here is coming in and it's coming in at a fairly good clip, but it says it's variable at three knots, visibility 10 statute miles, few clouds at 1300 feet, a few more at 5,500 feet, broken at 7,000 feet. So there are several layers of cloud to contend with. Temperature, oh, is a warm 26 degrees. Oh, they do get such lovely weather in Florida. Altimeter setting is 2999, just a little bit above the standard 2992. And it's got a history of being VFR for the past several hours and currently is listed as VFR. The Terminal aerodrome forecast 
is showing wind 0707 knot showers in the vicinity. Well, the last time I flew into Miami, it was pouring down with rain. I mean, there were terrible storms in the area. So I'm hoping I'm not going to have a wet takeoff. Looking at the runways, the, there are, these are the ones, eight left, eight right, nine and 12. So if seven is in use, then uh, 70 degrees, then it looks like we may be taking off on one of these. Don't know which, but we'll have to look. I'm not awfully sure where the departure gate is. My suspicion is that it is one of these out here, but I'm not really sure. So we'll have to look that up in just a moment. Looking now at Havana, here we've got wind 090 coming pretty much the same. Four knots, visibility 9,000 meters, Few clouds at 3,000, temperature 23 degrees, and Q&H 1014. Just one point above standard. 1013 is Q&H standard. It has been minimum just a little while ago, but currently it is VFR. And here you can see the wind is sweeping across the northern part of the island. Here's Havana and there is the airport just south of the city. So looking at the runways, then the best guess is that we'll be coming in on this one right here and that would be on runway six. Um, that's That would be the guess and uh, looking at the terminal area. Now, this is terminal three. And here, this is uh, 24 and this is seven. So we'll be at one of these because this is where all of the international flights, especially from America or from Europe, they come in to this particular terminal and they will be at one of these stands. Don't know which one yet, it'll be whichever one is available when we get there. All right, let's go into sim brief. We are, of course, Orion Air making a historic flight <laughs> and we are number 186. We're departing from KMIA and we're going to go to MUHA. And there is the alternate. We'll look that up in a moment. I'm going to put in here the uh, aircraft type, Ryanair 186. This is the airframe. We are a 737-800, which is exactly the same model and configuration aircraft of American Airlines Flight 17. Cruise profile for us is six. Uh, Ryanair is always six. And registration, E-I-E-N-I. -E Schedule flight time, gate to gate is one hour 15. Departure is eight left, it says here. Arrival six, pretty much as we thought. And we will go at the same altitude as the previous flight of 260. We are, of course, four because everybody wants to go and visit Havana today. We have one ton of precious cargo. Can you guess what that is? Oh, of course you can. Yes, champagne and caviar. <laughs> and here is the flight route. We'll be using the Glad Zulu 2 departure. This is the standard route. And this is the entry for uh, approach into Cuba and La Habana. And there is the, the route. Here you can see it coming out over the top, coming down by Key West, and then making pretty much the same route going in as the previous flight of Flight 17. 
And here is the Juan Gomez International, which is the alternate airport. It's at an elevation of 210 feet. And here is the current weather conditions. So we have the information and you can see it's not far away from La Habana in case things go pear-shaped and we have to do a missed approach and go to our alternate for some reason. Okay, we'll go up here, we'll save this flight and we'll generate the flight plan. Well, here's the flight plan summary. Got the flight number, aircraft, or origin, destination, alternate. There's our cruise altitude. Uh, departing airtime is 59 minutes. Block fuel, 5,712 kilograms. And there's the routing. Dispatcher remarks are none. And down here, here we have Ryanair 186. This F260 is our uh, cruise altitude and there is our route. MUVR is our alternate should things go upside down. <laughs> we'll need to know cost index 6. We'll need to know the average wind and direction and speed. We will be putting on board 5,712 kilograms of fuel, which is 5.7 metric tons. The reserves 2,011, so that's 2.0 metric tons there. Trip and taxi is 3,006 kilograms required, so that's three tons. No tankering recommended. Here is the full flight route and I'll put this in the description box below the video. Here is the descent information that we'll need to know. Here at flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet, that's the wind speed and direction. At flight level 150 or 15,000 feet, wind speed and direction. And here at flight level 100, which is 10,000 feet, and we've got the direction and the speed of the air at that time. And it looks like we'll be nice and warm on the descent. Looking at the NOTAMs for our destination, we can see that pneumatic starters are not available. <laughs> so we have to start with the UPS it also advises that bird concentration due to migratory period is also in effect. So there is quite a bit of bird problems in the area. And it says Abgas 100 fuel is not available, so we don't have to worry about that. Here is the wind direction for our flight altitude. This is for 2000 for 24,000, we'll be at 26,000, but it's pretty close. And it's showing that we're going to be having headwinds uh, all the way, which is not good. It means that we use more fuel, of course. And here is the vertical profile, starting out here from Miami, climbing up to a top of climb, going across, and then the descent down into... Uh, La Habana Airport right down here, Jose Mati. And it's showing that we'll be having some headwinds pretty much all the way along. So nothing, nothing that we can't handle. These are not all that strong of a headwind, so we shouldn't be doing too bad. All right, let's go into Navigraph charts. Okay, we click on flights new flight from sim brief and we bring in the one that we just made and there it is we open up the charts list for our origin we're going to need to know the airport information and parking bays 
If we're going to be departing from D26, let's look and see where that is. Yeah, there it is. There's D26 right there at the very top. Pretty much where I thought it would be, but I wasn't sure. So now we know where we're going to be when we depart. We'll be using the the Glad Zulu 2 departure, and that's this one. There's the Glad Zulu waypoint there. So we will pin this to the bottom here as well. Now we go over to our destination and we need the airport information. Now we've got a lot of things on here. ATIS is 132.5 the ground is 121.9, tower is 118.1. And here you can see, this is the International Terminal 3 right here. This is the one that we were looking at earlier. And down here you can see the airport stands as they are all enumerated. Previous flights of American Airlines have come in on 14 and on seven. For some reason or other, they like to be parked right next to the building. And the tower is just over here in, in relationship to this particular terminal. The runway length is a good long runway, 13,123 feet. So plenty of room there. And if we're coming in on runway six, then the heading will be 059. So if we land on this, if we can, we'll try to take off the Echo, uh, the Charlie or the Echo off ramp, and then make our way into the terminal area there. The entry four, this is the entry for procedure coming down and then it swings into here and then we'll make a move and go into the airport there. We'll be coming in on runway six. So we're going to choose ILS runway six. Pin that. Let's look at the overlay. So here you can see the Initial fix and the initial approach fix, looks like the intermediate are both the same here, is Woolsey. And that will be at that point. And then it's, oh, 060 for uh, the compass heading inside to make our approach in there. All right, we, we can do that. So looking at this, we're coming in ILS runway six, Final, so we'll just click on that and that brings in the information right there. Look at that. Easy, isn't it? Just simple. Looking at the information that we need here, the localizer is 110.5, final approach course 060. The decision altitude, the decision height here is 420 that we're going to have to set. The airport elevation is 210 feet. On a missed approach, climb on tack 060, which is this, until 2000 feet, turn right and intercept the outbound VOR radial 154, which is this one right here. So that is our missed approach procedure. Transition level is set by ATC. Transition altitude is 3,000 feet. Quite a bit different than the US, which is 18,000 feet. And there you can see the 116.1. That's the Habana VOR. So we'll be putting that into our uh, second navigational heading.
got that in and here's the descent profile. We come in at 2000 feet, 060. At this particular point it's mandatory to be 2000 feet and then it's the glide slope all the way down until we get to the touchdown at 210 feet. Okay, we have the information that we need, so I'll close up all of these items here. And okay, if you're ready, then Carlos, let's go ahead and jump into the aircraft and get things cranked up, shall we? Ah, uh, there you are, Carlos. Do come on in and take your seats. Don't forget, buckle up your seatbelt. Now, you've been in Ryanair 186 before, so you know what we do in here. I've already been outside and I've made sure all the fuel is on board. I kicked the tires, made sure they look good. I even washed all the windows, although we may hit some rain. I don't know if we're going to do that or not, but I've washed them and cleaned them so they are sparkling. Don't you think that they are absolutely clean? Look at that. How clean can they be? <laughs> and I'm here at, par at stand Delta 25, Delta 25. Now, the flight that the that we looked at earlier, the American Airlines Flight 17 that was already starting and was already en route, it landed and so what I've done is I've got the same information for the start and the finish from them. Now they started at D25 and they actually ended at B12 which is in the Terminal 3 uh, area at Havana. So we will try to do the same thing. Right, let's go then. Here's how we do it all. Click on the battery, make sure that we have enough voltage. Turn on the fuel pumps and then start the APU. Now looking at the APU, the low oil pressure light has gone on and in a moment the engine gas temperature is going to rise. There it goes. Look at that. There it goes. And I've got up here, I've got this switch pointing to APU generator. There's no volts coming from it at the minute, but when it does, we will then have 115 volts. Now down here, you can see the engine gas temperature is stabilizing and coming down and in a moment there it is I'm now going to switch to the APU generator and now we have 115 volts how about that so that's how we start that and then of course we turn on the galley Turn on the IRS to get the GPS warmed up. Over here, we turn on the emergency exit lights. No smoking and fasten seat belts. The left and the right window heat. We'll leave the probes off for the moment. Over here, I'm turning on the left and the right hydraulic pumps. The forward service hatch is open. That's the main ac access. And the equipment light is on, which are the air stairs. The air stairs are down. Then over here, I'm going to turn on the APU bleed, the recirculating fans, the packs, and listen. There's the air conditioning running through the system to cool everything down. Just that easy. Now, while I'm here, let me show you what it looks like from this particular vantage point. Now I'm looking out the left window and looking down at the parking stands of that main terminal area in Miami. 
and there you can see all of the detail it's really quite quite good and I'm showing 12 13 12 13 in my frame rate which is not bad considering I'm using 4k monitors and there are three of them attached so I have all sorts of detail on this and there's even a train that runs across the top as soon as it comes in I'll try to show it to you ah there it is and going around going down to the station look at that lots of animation in this and of course this is Latin VFR they are the ones who made this scenery and it is absolutely stupendous okay now we are getting ourselves ready so I'm going to now turn on the steady lights and everything is set and I can see outside that our self-loading cargo is already starting to board look at them there Wow. So right, now it's time to, to program the FMC. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to check that the air rack data, the navigation data is in, is current and that there are no problems with the program. Position initialization, of course we are at KMIA. Put that in. We are at Delta 25. So I'm going to put in Delta 25. And there it is. It came right up with the exact coordinates according to the charts. So I bring that into the temporary and then transfer it to that. And now our GPS is fixed. It is set. Go to root and we put in KMIA once again. Our destination is M-U-H-A, M-U-H-A, and we are, of course, flight Ryanair, and we are 186, and then we go to next page. Our route today is taking us out to the first waypoint, which is Lowe's, so L-U-L-L-S is our first waypoint. Then we take the Yankee 196, the Yankee 196. That will then take us to Kanoa. C A N O A. And that's it. Activate, execute. Easy peasy. Go to fix, and now we put in Muha, M U H A, as our destination and we want a four mile circle we want a 10 mile circle and we want a 30 mile circle now we go to descent go to forecast transition level as you remember is set by ATC but we do need to put in the flight levels of 200 150 and 100 and the Q&H at our destination is 1015, 1015. Speed and direction of the wind at flight level 200 or 20,000 feet is 189 at 8. 189 at 8. And at 150 it is 128.7, 128 and 7. And at 10,000 feet, it is 9511. So 95 and 11. And we execute that. Now we go to departures and arrivals. Go to the departure. Now this is where we have to listen in to the ATIS to find out what the airport conditions are. And the ATIS is 119.15 so 119.15 
Miami International Airport information Victor 1802 Wind Zulu visibility 357 at 3 greater than 20 miles Sky condition temperature 2000 scattered 7000 scattered dew point altimeter 2624 1017 landing and departing runway 26 left runway 26 right runway 27 runway 28 left runway 28 right runway 29 up left runway 29 up right and runway 30 VFR aircraft say direction of flight all aircraft read back hold short instructions advise controller on initial contact you have Victor Miami clearance delivery Ryanair 186 ready to copy IFR clearance to Jose Marti International Ryanair 186 is cleared to Charlie Alpha November Oscar Alpha Airport as filed fly runway heading climb and maintain 8000 departure frequency is 120.5 score 2425 Ryanair 186 cleared to Charlie Alpha November Oscar Alpha Airport as filed fly runway heading climb and maintain 8000 departure on 120.5 score 2425 Ryanair 186, red back correct. Contact ground on 121.8. Right, we have our IFR clearance. So now we need to go and to get our taxi clearance so we know which runway we're actually going to be taking off from. So, uh, request that. So it's Miami ground, Ryanair 186 with Victor ready to taxi IFR. Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short at runway 26 left via taxiway 5 November 1 1 November November 1 3 light 1 1 contact tower on 1 2 3 point nine -er. when ready Taxi and hold short runway 26 left via taxiway 5 November 1 1 November November 1 3 light 1 1 Ryanair 186 Right we have our clearance so we now know we're going to be departing from runway 26 left. So things have turned around a little bit for us. So now we have to change things a little bit. So I'm going to put in 26 left right over here. I'm going to go down and look for the Glad Zulu 2. Execute that. Then we go to departures and arrivals. We're still looking in at coming in on ILS runway 06 and it will be the entry 4 and it will be on the and the transition is Kanoa. Execute that. Now we go to legs and we'll have a look at how this is going to come out. Right, I'm going to switch now to plan so that we can go through each of these steps. So I'm going to just go through the steps here, one by one. So there's the Kenso, there's the Gator, Rutledge, there's the Glads. Now, I'm going to go from there and bring that up. So that brings it down to Lulls. Go through this, there's the entry. And the HA407, come right into Wolsey, right there. And then HA407. 402 and straight in for a landing ha, as long as there's no problems how does that look pretty good all right so I'm now switching back to map and I'm now going to go and in put the weather on put the data on you can see the dotted lines appear and then I'm going to switch this to get a 20 mile radius on the screen. Right, since we're departing from runway 26 left, the heading at that uh, right there, if you can see that, and I've got the Navigraph charts open here, so you can see it's 272 degrees on the course, so I'm going to spin this to 272. I'm going to put a heading of 272 in this one. We're cleared to 11,000 feet, so I'm going to put 11,000 feet in the altitude. And 272 on here. We're cruising at 26,000 feet, so up here I'm putting 26,000 in this. And if you remember, the elevation at our destination is 210 feet, so I'm going to put 200 in this. That's the nearest to it. 
So this is for our pressurization. Okay. Now we have that. I'm going to go to root, perform the initialization. Now the fuel, we have 2,011 kilograms for reserve. We have a trip is, and taxi, which is 3,006. That comes to 5,017 or 5. 5 would be the nearest number. 2 is the number for the reserves. Cost index is 6. 260 is our cruise altitude. The average wind is 199 at 5. Transition altitude is 3,000 feet, so I'll put that in there, and then double-click this, and it calculates everything for us, and all I have to do now is click Execute. Go to N1 limit. It's 27 degrees outside in Florida today. Oh, it's a lot better than the 8 degrees we have here. And go to Takeoff. We'll be using flaps 10. Double click this for center of gravity and trim. And then one click on each of these gives us V1, rotation speed, and V2, which of course is liftoff. So that's 145 over here. Okay, on your side, I'm going to put terrain and the data, and that's come up on yours. So now I'm going to put the flight director on here, flight director on, VNAV, LNAV, and you can see I have two green lights on here, so we have a good flight plan. Arm the throttle, VOR1, VOR2, VOR1, and VOR2 over there. Now the VOR1 is going to have the localizer, which is 110.5, and the Navigash, navigation 2, the VOR2, it's going to have the Havana VOR, which is 116.1. So 116.1. All right, so now those two are active. And we'll get the TCAS active. Now our decision height is 420 feet, so I'm going to put 420 into this and that's for this down here right here you can see that so 420 for our decision height okay we've got that and 1017 is local so it looks like it's good looking to RTO Right, all of our self-loading cargo is on and the air conditioning is running nicely so I'm going to bring up the stairs and fold them up underneath the forward hatch. Now that's the electrical motor that you can hear which is bringing in the stairs and bringing them underneath a small compartment underneath that forward area really neat stuff there. Now I'm going to turn on the yaw damper. Flight continuity light has gone out. So we are now ready to do our checklist. So fuel is on board, is correct. Windows are all locked. Seat belt signs are on. Door lights are out. MCP programmed and set. Takeoff thrust bugs are done, speeds are done, CDU pre flight, rudder airline trim is free and clear. Now, for taxi and briefing, we are needing to move our nose to the left and our tail to the right. Okay? Nose to the left, tail to the right. And the anti collision light is now going on. Right, now we need to do our pushback and we'll get our engine started. So, which engine would you like to start first today? Number one or number two? It's up to you, Carlos. It's your choice, left or right. You want to start the right engine today? Okay, then I'm going to switch this 
to generate a tool so that when the main engine over there starts to give us the electricity it will show on that okay everything is set it's all looking good so I'm going to now ask the nice people to give us a pushback cockpit to ground go ahead we've been cleared for pushback and start they want the tail to our right copy that ready to push tail to the right parking brake is released please parking brake is released and I'm now turning the air conditioning off brakes released and getting ready to turn on this as soon as it comes, as soon as we start. Brakes released, here we go. Right, I'm switching to engine number two. The start valve has opened, and here you can see the N2 is spinning up. That's the compressed air in the APU that is forcing the spin on the fans. When it gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. There it is. Now I'm looking now for the engine gas temperature to start to climb. Getting a good start there. Look at that. Look at that temperature rising. Looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. And it did good. We should hear the engines in just a moment. There they go. And I'm now looking for 115 volts coming up on this one. There it is. Now, switching now to engine number one for start. And the start valve has opened. There's the N2 spinning up. When it gets to 24, we'll bring in the fuel. There it is. Fuel going in. Push back complete. Parking brake set. Parking brake is set. Brake set. Now we're looking for 115 volts to appear up there when it gets going. The oh good, look at that. The engine gas temperature is coming up very nice. Steering pin is pulled. Watch for the salute and release from guidance on your right and have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. They are such nice people on the ground, aren't you? Aren't they? Don't you think so? And there's 115 volts on engine number one. Now, and everything is let, so now I'm going to push this. I'm now running on the generators for both of the main engines. So I'm going to turn on the air conditioning again, turn off the APU and turn off the APU bleed there. Right. Okay, looking good. And now we'll do the check. Generators are on. Check. Probe heat is now going on left and right. Anti-ice not required. Isolation valve correct. Engine start levers are idle detent. Flight deck door closed and locked. Recall is check and I'm going to go to flaps 10. You know, this really is a detailed scenery for Miami. Really is. Okay, we have flaps green lights, auto brake is RTO, speed brake lever down D10, ground equipment is clear. Well, the ground equipment that pushed his back may be clear, but we've got kamikazes. Go on, get out of it. My goodness me. They're everywhere. Okay, now I'm going to turn on the lights. And all set. All right, cabin crew, we are going to taxi to the active. And for that, we need to go down there 
over to the left and then get around to the end of the active runway. Okay, so, well, before I do that, let me show you what this airport scenery looks like. It's really, really good. Now looking out, as you can see across the way there, look at all the buildings. Look at the detail in that. This also gives you a good chance to see the, the weather that we have. You can see all of the clouds up ahead there. And then over to the right, there you can see the very detailed terminal building that we just left. And my frame rate is 13 and a half, 13, 14. So actually we've improved a little bit by moving away from the terminal. Not bad. Okay, let's get ourselves going then. And we need to go over through there, through the November. There we go then. Got to keep my eyes open for other aircraft. I might be able to um, take on uh, the odd kamikaze, but another aeroplane is a different story, isn't it? <laughs> Especially if they're a bigger airplane than I am. Miami ground, world travel 4787, taxi to the gate. World travel 4787, taxi to the gate, whiskey 17, via taxiway for that Yankee uniform. Taxiing to gate, whiskey 17, via taxiway, Quebec Yankee uniform, world travel 4787. Well, we're coming on very nicely. Ah, and there are. Uh, animated hold short uh, lights as well very nice detail All right we go down this one Beautiful scenery made by Latin VFR. Coming up to the end of the uh, active runway just up here. And then I need to turn my frequency to the tower frequency, which is one, two, three, decimal nine. One, two, three, decimal nine. Let's request our clearance. Miami Tower, Ryanair 186, Swifty Fly departure, runway 26 left. Ryanair 186, cleared for takeoff, runway 26 left. Cleared for takeoff, runway 26 left, Ryanair 186. Okay, we are cleared for takeoff. I'm going to move out into position. There's nothing coming. We're all clear on that. And then we'll do the 
checklist in just a moment. Miami Tower, Pacifica 7632, ready to go. Runway 27, IFR 2, Hartsfield, Jackson, Atlanta. Pacifica 7632, cleared for takeoff. Runway 27. Cleared for takeoff, runway 27, Pacifica 7632. Busy airport, very busy airport. Okay, now recall, flight controls are checked, flaps are green light, check, stabilizer trim is correct, auto brake RTO, speed brake lever down, takeoff briefing bleeds are good, engine continuous and start switches continuous position is now strobe and steady all lights are on and starting the clock okay are you ready you ready carlos okay in that case then let's advance the power to n1 we have good power toga button push and we're rolling. V1, rotate. Rotate. V2. V2. And lift off. Okay, positive rate, gear up. Going to flaps five. Ryanair 186, contact Miami, departure on 120.5. Going to autopilot. Pacific R7632, contact Miami, departure on 120.5. 5,000 feet for the departure, that's the departure procedure, so we're on, everything is looking good, and we're now crossing over the, uh, <laughs> the alligator area, so uh, I hope that we don't come down in this, it would be rather awkward with all those alligators there, right, we're on our way. So Carlos, we don't have a very long trip today, so you'd better nip in the back and start to guzzle down some of that champagne and caviar. And then as soon as we are on our uh, downwind, I'll give you a shout so that you can join me back up here, okay? I'll see you in a bit.
Jose Marti International, Airport Information, Alpha, 1849er, Zulu, Wind, 0, 95 at 7, Visibility, 6, Sky Condition, Clear, Temperature, 2, 9er, 2.25, Altimeter, 1, 0, 1, 6, Landing and Departing, Runway, 6, VFR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact you have. Alpha. Marty Tower, Ryanair 18631 miles west to a charter to land. Ryanair 186, Marky Tower, enter left base, runway 6, altimeter 1016. Fly left base, runway 6, Ryanair 186. Well, there you are, Carlos. Come on back and take your seat. Did you hear that? We are now cleared to enter left base for landing at runway 06. And it is some rough weather out there. We had quite a bit of bounce when we were departing from Miami. As you know, just a few days ago was Ian, uh, Hurricane Ian. And um, there was still some residual storm activity around the area and uh, well, let me show you what the storms look like. Look at all of this. Now this, of course, is on the weather radar picture. Marty Tower, orbit 246, ready for IFR departure, runway 6. And outside looks like this. Runway 6. Clear for takeoff, runway 6, orbit 246. Well, we have just crossed over the coastline of Cuba. There's Cuba below us. And we have passed the entry waypoint. So now we are on base to land on runway 06. In a moment, we'll be making our turn, and it'll be a left turn to go to the initial approach fix, which is also the intermediate fix, of Wolsey. At that point, we have to be at 2,000 feet. So I have everything set here for 2,000 feet. Seatbelt signs are on, lights are on, ready. And we're coming up. Uh, about eight miles, we'll be making our turn. Orbit 246, contact Havana departure on 120.3. And it is busy. There's quite a bit of activity at the airport, so I'm keeping my eyes open for uh, other aircraft in the vicinity. By the way, how was the champagne and caviar? Oh! Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it, but very sorry about all the bumps and the turbulence that we went through as we encountered all those storms. I hope it didn't cause you to spill any, because that was the best French champagne that we had loaded, you know. All the posh stuff, not that plonk, you know, that you can buy. Well, we're running into some IFR conditions here. So it's going to be a little bit bumpy. But I have slowed ourselves down. And to try to relieve the bump factor. We're on course. We're coming down the glide slope very nicely, and I have the uh, landing profile set on your screen right over there. We are 24 DME miles from 
the Havana VOA and we are 24 miles from the uh, Havana localizer. So everything is working out very well, very well indeed. Right, I'm going to switch to the approach chart so you can see there you can see what we're looking at. We'll be making that turn and uh, as soon as we do that then we are on a very long final for coming in to land on runway 06. Starting our turn in just a moment and I'm going to turn this to the next heading that we need. Here we go, making our turn. I've got 060 here and there, which is the course for our landing at 06. It is 1016 on the Q&H. Okay, we're coming in very nicely. We're lining up. There's quite a bit of cloud around. We're too far away to see the uh, runway yet, I think. Besides which, there's still a, quite a bit of cloud in the area, which is making... Martin Tower, American Pacific, minor 335 is 8 miles southwest, inbound ILS, runway 6 approach. American Pacific, minor 335, Martin Tower, fly straight in, runway 6, altimeter 1016. I hope I straight in runway six American Pacific minor three three five. I hope that they're not going to try to get in ahead of us. I don't see where they are. There's nothing up on the on the screen. There is somebody that's behind us. hate it when people jump the queue. You know that's that is pretty bad manners. American Pacific minor three three five clear to land runway six. Clear to land runway six. American Pacific minor three three five. Oh they may be well ahead of us. Okay, in that case they may not interfere with us, but there is another aircraft just off to our side there somewhere. It's at the same height that we are and just a little bit behind us. Oh, the weather has cleared out a little bit. Okay. And somewhere out there is the airport but I, I can't see it yet. Martin Tower, Pacifica 6021 in 27 miles southwest inbound ILS runway 6 approach. Pacifica 6021, Martin Tower, make straight in runway 6, altimeter 1016. Make straight in runway 6, Pacifica 6021. Well, we're coming up to our altitude, which is 2,000 feet. 2,500. Check. And when we get to the Woolsey waypoint, then we will be on final. Still don't have the airport in sight. Martin 
Tower, Pacifica, 4864 is 18 miles southwest, inbound, ILS, runway 6, approach. Pacifica, 4864, Marky Tower, fly straight in, runway 6, altimeter 1016. I have the runway inside. Fly straight in, runway 6, Pacifica, 4864. the ones that have just talked then they're slightly behind us and I'm not going to be best happy if they uh, decide to cut us off there's the runway ahead We're getting ready to turn on to final. Okay, I'm on the localizer. American Pacific Minor 335, exit runway when able. We are now 10 miles. 10 miles to landing. The runway is ahead. And American Pacific Minor 335, exit runway when able. And there's the runway. On the glide slope. You can see there that we'll be intercepting the glide slope in just a moment and then we'll start to descend. American Pacific Minor 335 exit runway when able. Going to flaps 10. And gear down, flaps down. All lights are on. Everything is clicked on. Okay. Crew secure for landing. American Pacific Minor 335, turn next taxiway. We have the runway in sight, to white, to red. Line Air 186, clear to land, runway 6, follow the aircraft on the runway. American Pacific, minor 335, contact ground on 118.1. Clear to land, runway 6, line Air 186. We are clear to land. 118.1, American Pacific, okay. minor 335. Mark the ground, American Pacific Minor 335, taxi to parking, American Pacific Minor 335, taxi to General Aviation Parking, using taxiway Charlie Alpha Juliet, Marty Tower, World Travel, Niner 868 is 44 miles southwest, inbound, I am in Taxi. I have control, ha <laughs> Taxiway Charlie Alpha Juliet, American Pacific Minor This should scare him down on the ground. Marking tower, fly straight in, runway 6, altimeter 1016. Pacifica 4864, clear to land, runway 6, follow the Boeing 737 on final. Aha! Follow us! Clear to land, runway 6, Pacifica 4864. Make straight in, runway 6, world travel, Niner 868. 500. We have crosswind. We have a crosswind. 400. Three hundred. Approaching minimums. And we're on course. 
city minimums. We're landing. We're committed to land. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. And nose down. Reverse thrusters are on. Take this turning. Pacifica four eight six four go around. Going around Pacifica four eight six four. Pacifica four eight six four contact Havana approach on one two zero point three. One two zero point three Pacifica four eight six four. Ryanair one eight six exit runway when able. And Line here we eight are. Six. Contact ground on one one eight point one. Going to one one eight point one. Line at one eight six. Okay, we're past the whole shoreline, so we'll stop here. Parking brake is on. Lights are off. Turning on the APU. Crew is released to go to work. And okay, now. You can see where we are, we're at that first turn off, so we have to go down here and then park over there. According to what I can see, if we were to go into number 12, so number 12 then is at the end on that right side. So let's see if we can actually do that. All right, break off and all oh, very tight please. Switching off all of these, cleaning up. Okay, good. Beautiful detailed scenery. This is by uh, Mex High Flight, I think it is. Mex High Flight. Pacifica yes. Turn next taxiway. Mex High Flight is the ones who did this, and there's grass and all sorts of things here. Let me show you the detail of this. See all the grass that's growing there? They've done a great Pacific job of putting all that together. And there's the tower. And there is Terminal 3, the international terminal that we're going to come into. So we'll go up here and take not the Delta but the Echo since that will bring us more in line with where we need to go. But look at the detail, isn't that really good? impressed with this airport scenery. Turn next taxiway. Very impressed indeed. A 
And I think I can see the one that we need to come into. It's, we'll take this one and then it will be the one at the very end. Going to 118.1 Pacifica 6021. There's a 12 left and a 12 right. I think it will be the 12 left maybe the better one for us, but we'll see Smarty which ground. one six, we can zero, see. Two, one. Taxi to the gate. Pacifica 6021, taxi. Right, now I can hear myself think. Okay. Here we go, turn left here. I'll stick my hand out. How about that? Now, with a bit of luck, there'll be some markings to tell me which one is which. So that first one was probably 11, and This one, I think, is 12. Yes, this is 12. This is the one that we want. And it happens to be free. Frame rate, by the way, is 1819. So we're doing very well with frame rates at the moment. So this is a very detailed airport, but it's not hard on the um, on the frames. And there we go. Stop and brake on. Lights off. APU on. Shut down. Okay, switching everything off. And the air stairs are down, the door is open, all the lights are off. TCAS is off, all of that is off. Okay. Now, last thing, APU bleed off and fuel is off and batteries off and shutdown is complete. We made it. And oh, I've got to show you this. This is, uh, Look at the detail there. You can see all the way through the glass of the terminal building to see the trees and other things at the other side. And this is the view from stand 12. We made it to stand 12. And our frame rate is 18, 19, 18, between 18 and 19. So we're actually have some very good frame rates, very good. And these are three monitors I'm showing here, and they are all at 4K resolution, UHD, ultra high definition. I've got all the stops pulled out, so we have maximum for all of the detail and everything to be shown. Right. Carlos, we made it, and we had some storm activity, of course, that was Hurricane Ian, the residue is a little bit of stuff that comes always lurking around to catch on wary aviators, but it didn't catch us, we managed to thread our way through, you know, I was thinking of that film, Flight, and uh, it showed that it's about that pilot who uh, ends up turning upside down in order to land his uh, aircraft and uh, 
uh, Denzel Washington, he was the pilot. And I remember when he was taking off, and of course in the, in the film, he was actually drunk. I, of course, was not. <laughs> I may drink from here, but it's Diet Cola, believe it or not. And he threaded his way out through the storms until he got on top and there was turbulence. And we also had turbulence. We had turbulence on that too. So, yeah, I was thinking of that, that we pretty much did the same thing that Denzel Washington did. <laughs> Oh well, I'm sure he did a much better job of it than I did. But here we are, we are in Cuba. Bienvenido a Cuba. Yes, welcome to Cuba. And look at all the sights that there are to see, the double-decker buses to go around all the streets and see everything there is. This, of course, is the land of Fidel Castro but and Batista, but also of Ernest Hemingway as well. So it's quite a history, quite a history. And I hope that you enjoy your stay here as you explore the beauties of Havana and Cuba in general. So Carlos, thank you very much indeed for inviting me to fly this route and for flying with me. I do appreciate it very much. Thank you. And I'll see you again on another flight. And everyone else, take care. Be good. <laughs> Be good. <laughs> and I'll see you all again on next week on a flight of Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.